And Nathaniel is utterly convinced that the only territory that he himself, for his own work, wants to work in is not the digital world, but specifically the world of celluloid. Here's a nice roll of uh, Kodachrome 1. The first Kodachrome, which is now called Kodachrome 1, was just called Kodachrome. And that was the, f whenever you see footage of World War II, like in the South Pacific, and it has that weird kind of turquoise blue color, the sky and the sea, and kind of very contrasting. It was only 10 ASA. First met Nathaniel through my need to find a documentary film editor. We set up a meeting and uh, we got together and I uh, described uh, the project that I was attempting to, 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 to you know, make and he was convinced that he would be a good fit as editor and, uh, and he said, but I think you should come and see what I'm doing uh, to better understand why what you're describing makes me think that we would be a good fit. <laughs> this is hung Hungarian. This is from Hungary. Hungary, black and white. Soviet Super 8. This is there's actually film in here. I was invited to uh, go to his apartment, which is also his studio. It feels like, uh, I don't know, almost like sacred place. It has this incredible atmosphere of, uh, of ease. And then eventually, you know, Nick said, okay, well, let's go down and look at some movies. And so there's this trap door that opens up and you descend down these stairs into this very lovely, also very magical feeling uh, place where Nathaniel works and projects. Well, luckily, uh, the main thing is that I have a rent control apartment, which I got in 1970. That affected my art more than anything because my rent is very, very, you know, is not in the, in the reality of modern rents. Just uh, in San Francisco, there are these uh, semi legal apartments in the back of garages called uh, in law apartments. I guess they were built during the Second World War. So I have a backyard and I, down, I have a downstairs where all, I do all my editing. I can project during the day. This place allows me to have a monastic life. You know, uh, it's, it's kind of a hermitage. And then uh, I live about a 10 minute walk from the Arboretum in the park, in the Golden Gate Park, which is a, a vast, uh, should we say, library of potential images. The thing that he cares most about is the medium of film with respect to his artistic life. That's the medium he's always worked in, and that's the medium that he has, uh, in, in, his, in his own way, fought to preserve um, in a fashion that, for me, is completely heroic. I, gu I guess I, gu I draw my uh, inspiration from two things, from, from pain and beauty. Um, I find light itself uh, erotic. Uh, that, you know, the, the beauty of light, the tensions of light, the way light, especially in Northern California, it's so, light here is the main attribute of this area of the country. And uh, the light is so beautiful that you actually want to make love with it in some way. And there's something about, you know, the dark camera and putting the film through a black box and letting a peephole of light come in. You know, it's all, all the tension of that is uh, kind of wonderful. And then, and then the other thing is, like, I think like any artist or any human being, you have, you have, there's the pain of being a person. You know, they, you know there's, being a person is a bit of a project. I, I find that working on film and r arranging images in a certain magical way t takes that pain and turns it into joy. It's almost like if you had a fire that was smoldering and then you rearrange the logs so there's enough light, enough, excuse me, enough air, you know, and enough and all of a sudden the fire burns really clean. So I find that the, the art process is one of taking your smoldering energies and uh, rearranging them uh, for a kind of clear clarity. He's had an explosion of, of, of making uh, and finishing over the past five or 10 years that's just been um, really breathtaking to watch and just as, a, as, a, as an output, uh, let alone uh, as a, a sensory experience when you, when you actually watch the films. There's about a 10 year period when I d stopped, not stopped shooting, but I stopped editing. I was very confused. And then I slowly 
got got in gear and then found a way to express what I wanted to express. It's been wonderful to 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 nurture uh, filmmaking as a as a you know as a personal poetic medium where it's just you and your camera and your and your splicer and your viewer and your projector, and you can arrange images in such a way that opens up a kind of poetic mystery, uh, some some kind of poignancy about the nature of existence. His films are deeply personal and in that sense very very intimate. So the exhibition side of Nick's life is. Um, is very uh, connected to intimacy. Often the films will be screened in small theaters, not always, but often. And I think whatever the theater size, it's, it's uh, Nick wants to make sure that the, the, the intimacy is never lost. And to see Nathaniel's films uh, takes work. It is not easy to see Nathaniel's films. They do not exist. And if you see anything on YouTube, you haven't seen it. And you have to see them because um, they're an extraordinary gift of love uh, in the most poetic way uh, about the magic of being uh, conscious and awake and alive. And nobody should miss that. To be a filmmaker, you have to have like a chariot, like Apollo. You have to be pulled by two horses, a very harsh horse and a very, almost a kind of narcissistic horse. The narcissistic horse says, oh, I'm in love with the world, I'm going to take pictures of it, you know. And yeah, then you end up with this stuff. Then, then the harsh horse has to say, well, what's really good? What, what's really working here? You, you, sort of need, you sort of need both. I think the, 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 what art really is, is something that nothing else is. You know, there's a, art, isn't, art doesn't do things that other things can do. I mean, real art. Real art does only this thing art can do, which is to take the relative material world and arrange it in such a way that creates something eternal. <laughs>